In this video, we present the experimental validation of a human-to-robot motion mapping scene that guarantees anthropomorphism. In order to map human-to-robot hand motion, we use the well-known joint-to-joint mapping with a fast cyberglove calibration procedure, which is robot hand specific and maps the row cyberglove values to robot hand joint values. As you can notice, force sensors are attached at the fingertips of the robot hand in order to capture the forces exerted. In order to map human-to-robot arm motion, we use a forward inverse kinematics mapping to achieve same position and orientation for human and robot end effectors. For doing so, we capture the position and orientation of the human end effector and elbow using the Liberty Motion Capture System. Then we add a shoulder offset to the human end effector before computing the robot inverse kinematics in order to scale workspace as there are significant dimensional differences between the human arm and the Mitsubishi PA10 robot arm. In case we don't apply such an offset, the IK solution results in configurations where the PA10 is quite folded. To compute analytically the inverse kinematics, we use the IK fast algorithm of open rave simulation environment. In order to handle redundancy, we choose the solution that minimizes structural dissimilarities between the human and the robot configurations and minimizes also the sum of distances between the human elbow and every joint position of the robot arm. In order to manipulate objects with a DLR, HAT2 robot hand teleoperating it with a cyberglove tube, we must be able to detect contact with the environment and perceive the excited forces by the robot fingertips. So we develop a low-cost force feedback device based on RGB LEDs and vibration motors. RGB LEDs are used to provide optical feedback through color alternations fading from blue to red proportionally to the force's magnitude while vibration motors are used to provide vibrotactile feedback. 